In my last video, I extensively addressed why I believe that Bethesda's Creation Club service is an utter disgrace to video games and modding, starting with the fact that the content it launched with was just a bunch of overpriced skins and extra items that don't add anything substantial to the overall experience. And the worst part is that better versions of these paid mods can already be found for free through other mod sources like the Nexus, so it's all recycled content anyway. It's especially insulting when you can Consider that Bethesda promised that the Creation Club would not allow existing mods to be retrofitted and that all content would be original. I would be more enthusiastic about the Creation Club if the content that it offered actually lived up to what was originally promised, many DLCs and substantial additions that would expand the game content, so things like new maps, new dungeons, new characters, new quests, new stories, so on and so forth. But instead, the bottom line of what we got with this service bogs down to mods turned microtransactions being published by Bethesda. Now some of you might be thinking, well I can just ignore this thing, right? Well, turns out Bethesda's even making that difficult. Ethical issues aside, the Creation Club has one major flaw that could be a hindrance to even those who are trying to steer clear of the service. It all begins with the fact that the Creation Club isn't some optional separate thing that you can just download on the side. Instead, the service is being patched directly into the games. What this means is that even if you aren't planning on using this service, if you update a game like Fallout 4 with the latest patch, the Creation Club will automatically automatically be added and installed. It will be hard-coded into the game proper. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, whatever, all I have to do is just ignore it, pretend like it's not even there. Well, I wish I could say that were entirely true. What people have learned over the past few days is that when the Creation Club is installed, it also automatically downloads all files associated with every released paid mod, regardless of whether you purchase them or not, regardless of whether these files are in use or not, and regardless of whether you intended to download them or not. The Creation Club just kind of dumps everything in your hard drive. I should also mention that these files aren't freebies, they are completely useless until you pay for a mod and receive the plugin to activate it. Think of mods as electronic devices that serve a certain function and the plugin as the power adapter. The hardware is just useless dead weight if you don't have a power adapter or power cord to power the device. So what you're left with when you install the Creation Club is a bunch of dead weight mod files that are only there to take up hard drive space. Think of it this way, imagine one day you decide that you want to pimp out your room with upgraded or brand new electronic devices. Maybe you want to get a new TV, a new PC, some game consoles, new sound system, you name it. In this scenario your house is your hard drive, your room is Fallout 4, and the electronic devices are the mods. And let's say that a few days ago a brand new electronic store called Creation Club, owned by a company called called Bethesda opened up nearby, where you consider going shopping one day. But before you even get a chance to check it out, Bethesda's Creation Club store decides to ship one of every item in their inventory to your house. You didn't ask them to do this, you didn't want them to do this, this is just something that they did just because. So you're sitting there in your house confused with all these electronic devices shipped to your house, but you're also thinking, well hey, look at all this free shit, didn't ask for any of this and it's taking up a lot of space, but hey, I'll take it. But then, as you start unboxing all of these Bethesda electronics, you realize that none of them come with a power adapter. You also learn that their power adapters are not only Bethesda proprietary, they are also different shapes and sizes from product to product. So you've got all these electronic devices, or mods, taking up space in your house, or hard drive, as useless dead weight without their appropriate power adapters, or plugins, to make them work. That's when you finally begin to understand that when you shop at the Bethesda Creation Club store, you're basically just paying them to give you the right power adapter for hardware that they forcefully and automatically sent you from the start. So say you're interested in purchasing a Bethesda TV that costs $500 worth of in-store currency, you would just be going to the store to purchase the appropriate power adapter for that TV. That way you can finally plug your TV in and turn it from dead weight to a usable product. The problem with this shopping system of course and why nobody does this is because if you aren't interested in any of these products, then all this stuff that they sent you is just going to be 
sitting in your house wasting space without their power adapters just forced upon you and acting as dead weight. And your house will continue to fill up with more useless junk as Bethesda's Creation Club store continues to send you hardware without power adapters after the release of every new electronic product. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of what Bethesda's Creation Club paid mod service will do to your hard drive. Regardless of whether you did or didn't purchase anything, regardless of whether you want anything to do with a creation club or not, it just automatically downloads all files of all paid mods to your hard drive. And it will also automatically download all mod files of all newly released paid mods as well. Fortunately, because the creation club only launched recently, right now it's only got a small selection of minor mods, which means that for now they don't take up too much space. Currently, all paid mods combined only take up a total of 681 megabytes. So this isn't a big issue right now, but think of what will happen a year or two from now when the Creation Club's library of mods grows into the hundreds. Imagine all those useless files being automatically downloaded throughout the course of years and decimating all your valuable hard drive space. In a manner of speaking, imagine the Creation Club electronic store shipping hundreds of deadweight machines throughout the course of years and cluttering your house to the brim with junk. That's kind of what will happen if Bethesda doesn't address this issue soon. Because in its current state, the Creation Club is a ticking time bomb that has the potential to turn its games into a software hazard. Which is why I felt it was important to give you guys a heads up with this video. You know, just in case you were planning on installing Fallout Four or Skyrim in the near future. I don't want you to wake up one day and wonder where the hell did all my hard drive space go? At least this issue has been widely talked about, so hopefully Bethesda is aware of all of this and will do something about it. Even by their standards, it seems like too big of an oversight. Then again, this is Bethesda we're talking about, who are infamous for releasing their games bug infested and unpolished. So honestly, who knows? I've got a solution. Hey Bethesda, there can't be Creation Club problems if there's no Creation Club to begin with. Catch my drift? Anyway, with that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this video useful, and if you enjoy my content, I hope you'll consider supporting me on Patreon to help our community remain independent from third-party sponsorship and corporate interference. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out. <laughs>